Hello there, and thanks for joining us for this episode of the Grow VC Everyone Funding Startups podcast. I'm your host, Marcus, and today we're talking about some common errors of judgment startups face and how to work your way out of these problematic situations. I'm here with Yoko and Bob Walsh from Startup To Do, among other activities. Bob, would you mind introducing yourself to our audience? Not at all. Um, hi there, I'm Bob Walsh. Um, I do a variety of things. Um, I'm the founder of something called StartupToDo.com, which is a subscription site designed to save startups time and make connections that you wouldn't necessarily make and basically improve your chances of succeeding. I've written five books that have to do with either starting a software startup or social media. Uh, the latest of those was the Web Startup Success Guide that came out about a year ago from A Press. Um, I have a blog called 47 Hats where I try and bring interesting things to the startup community by myself and others. And I do a podcast called the Startup Success Podcast where each week myself and my co-host, Pat Foley, interview someone interesting to the startup community that we can all learn from. What I can add is that we met in San Francisco last week and, and Bob actually gave his book Web Startup Success Guide for me and I was reading it when I flew back to London and uh, I must say that it's very, very good book so that it is so concrete and pragmatic uh, so that I, I can really recommend that book for entrepreneurs to, to learn very basic things what to do when you start a new company. Before moving on to our main discussion point, let's mention our member highlight from our community this week, a startup called AdNeedle. AdNeedle makes local online advertising easy. Users can create ads simply by typing in their business name and URL. Their technology delivers ads in front of the right person on the right site at the right time, based on behavior, interest, location, and various other data collected from users' activities online. And you can follow AdNeedle in our venture community or on adneedle.com. Let's proceed to our main episode topic, the five worst pitfalls startups face and how to get your way out of them. And what we're going to do is go through each point one at a time, and Bob will narrate our way through these different scenarios. And let's start with number one. This is our first pitfall. All I have to do is get money from a VC and I'll be rich. Bob, would you open this one up for us? This is the Cinderella story for IT people. All they have to do is find the right venture capitalist or maybe an angel investor who will look at their idea and say, this is fantastic. Of course I want to give you millions of dollars because um, why wouldn't I? And it's a very beguiling siren call that all you really have to do is focus on making a business plan and a pitch that are somehow irresistible to VCs. You get their money and you'll just hire everybody you need to do to do the actual work. Um, I won't say that this has never happened in the 30 years I've been in IT, but it's extremely rare. Your better chances are to go take uh, you know, $1,000, buy 1,000 lottery tickets, and, and you know, take your chances that way. Venture capitalists are, by nature, custodians of other people's money. And they make their money by doing two things really well placing bets on companies that have the technology, the team, the market position, the idea, the timing, and maybe the luck 
to be able to grow into very large company. And by very large company, I tend to mean over $100 million. And being really good at filtering out everything else. And that's typically where that startup who thinks he can just get money and be happy ends up. They get filtered out and they go nowhere. In today's market, if you're a first-time startup entrepreneur, I really think the reality is you have to get something to market and show that it is attractive and be able to demonstrate that this idea has traction if you plan to get some type of valuation that will be enticing to angels and VCs. And the further reality of it, it's not just that it's not a, that you have to come up with a good idea. You have to come up with an extremely good idea that can make enough money so that it can pay for the other 19 companies that the VC is going to invest in that fail. So it doesn't matter that you've got a good idea. It has to be a great, fantastic Google size idea. Now, maybe you can do that, and I hope that you can. But there's a lot of ground cover between being a successful technical developer, which is you know, my background and the people I work with, and being someone who has an idea that's going to reshape the face of IT in the world. I think the way that you can avoid this particular pitfall is in two ways. First, is this money really necessary? If you're building a startup that is better than perhaps other people's products, but not revolutionary, if you're building a startup that is unique, but doesn't require huge amounts of capital to build distribution channels or to establish a hardware inter, uh, infrastructure, um, why exactly do you want to give up control of your company? That would be the first question you need to ask. If you're doing this as a first-time startup, tackle something other than changing the entire world. You can do that with your second startup. The other thing to consider is can you are you what type of company are you going to build? There's sort of a very bipolar world out there when it comes to startups. You have startups who want to become the next Google. Their purpose is to grow a company extremely rapidly. They're interested in building a hundred, two hundred, five hundred, a billion dollar company if they can. And that's fine. That's how a lot of the world gets made. And then you have a lot of other people who are saying, well, you know, I'd be really perfectly content if my startup made me four times my annual salary on a regular basis. And I'm not really particularly interested in running 100 employees or being a manager who does that. Whatever you want to call these two polar opposites, you have to decide at the beginning which pole you're going to gravitate to. And if you're gravitating toward the non-giant software explosion type company, odds are very good that you're never going to fit the profile of what a VC or angel is looking for. And the sooner that you realize that, the sooner you can be successful on your own terms. And then we have pitfall number two. I know what the market wants. I don't need to do customer research. Bob? I have fallen into this one. I know so many good developers who have fallen into this. They have a great idea. They think, you know, they know who needs this because perhaps they work with them. Perhaps they're, they're part of that community. Perhaps this is what they've done in their day job. And they just jump right into the design and coding. Every time that happens, you're missing a very, very important opportunity.